making a start on the on the big veggie gun. Getting the dingo in and dipping up as much of this Kikuyu as we can. And then we get stuck making the garden bed. Get some mulch, get cardboard down, get some mulch of some description. So that we'll be ready to plant come spring. Pretty cool machine. Ronnie on the dingo again. So how's the big veggie garden going? Well, we're getting somewhere. We um, got the dingo in and then it had a flat tire. So we've stopped with the dingo, but we got most of the kaikuyu out. Um, so we started digging a garden bed here. Just got to get the borders, which we've got a lot of wood around. We're gonna do that. We'll pull out this fence here. Um, and you may say, gee, it's going to be a big veggie garden and I agree it is going to be a big veggie garden. Can we handle it? I hope so. We're going to give it a go and yes the hope is that we'll have lots of veggies and be fairly self-sustaining and vegetables and fruit and if we have excess then we're lucky we've got friends and family we can share it with and that would be the ultimate. So yeah started to dig our garden beds are about 75 centimeters wide and then a, a small path in between each garden bed that will be filled with mulch we're just trying to secure some of that and um, I would have liked to have had this done before now because I have I actually want to put some potatoes in and I've got some potatoes that have chitted and have got massive um, roots and ready to go in so um, as soon as I get this in I'll, I'll put uh, those in and then we'll start working on the other garden bed. What we thought we might do, because this is on a bit of a slope, is even do a, a bit of a step down here. So we'll work on that. We'll see if that looks like it's gonna work. But we're gonna make a start and just start planting uh, rather than getting it all um, tip top before we can plant because that could take a while because there seems to be every day something that crops up or, or that we need to do that takes us away from the stuff that we're planning to do. But we've made a start and it certainly is looking better. But really, I don't like having this bare dirt. It's not good for your garden. So as soon as we can get some form of coverage on it, even if that's just hay or sugar cane mulch to, to cover it, um, we shall. All right, we'll show you what it looks like soon. So it's a couple of days later and I've got one bed ready for planting. I've got some organic matter that uh, came from an old lamb shed and put that underneath and then some hay on top of the bed. So this will be ready to plant out the potatoes. We may get we've got and what we'll so just got into the cupboard to check out what potatoes I've got and as I said I've got many that are sprouting they've certainly chitted which is like this but these ones are sprouting um, these are jippy gold so I've saved these from potatoes we've had and some that I had last year in the ground those have no name they look like the ones I saved from myself, but then I've got some certified seeds, some Desiree and some Kennebec as well. And they are all chicken. And so they're, they're ready and I saved them out of the ground here of um, where we are because they're always good to go back. And um, 
yeah, they need to go in the ground. Ideally, you don't want them to get frost on them. And I know we're gonna have frost here for probably uh, quite a bit of time, but if I put a lot of mulch on top, and I have got a frost cover, if any frost of, um, that I see in the forecast, hopefully I'll protect them. But I will also not plant all these at once because it's nice to have a, a crop that continues. And I've also got some ochre, for those that might know it, came from my dear, my dear friend Annabelle. So they're New Zealand yams or ochre. Oxalis tuberosa or something like that. Um, so they're they're delicious and we'll see if we can grow those too. I think you I've never been able to grow them before and they're hard to, to get but and I've only got a little bag of little tiny ones, but if they grow, that would be great. So what I might plan on doing is get some of these bigger ones out. These ones that have really got um, big stems and the other option is, and I have seen people do that, knock knock those off. I don't know. We'll we'll experiment and we'll see what works. So yeah, yay for a big potato harvest, hopefully. So just starting to dig the next trench, and the reason I'm digging them so deep is they won't end up that deep. Is trying to get out these kaikuyu roots, and I thought I'd show you what we're dealing with here. So when we dig up there's these massive roots that I really want to get as much of that out of the garden as possible because they will just reroot. And I know we won't get rid of all this kaiku, you will just have to be on top of it. But um, yeah, starting the next one and then we'll, we'll um, keep looking for some mulch because once we get some mulch, we'll um, fill in these, these trenches with the mulch and that will be the pathways. These beds won't be as raised. But this is just a, a bit of a guide and i'm eyeballing it with my my special measuring stick there um, that's about 75 centimeters which we think is a good size give or take so yeah that's what we're up to now while i'm digging in the garden bed i thought i could show you what robert's doing today we're being very industrious today as you can see, it's a, a nice day. We've both got our t-shirts on. So he's working on the upgrade of the chook house. Getting the roof on, which is fantastic. Chook's all logged in the orchard. So here we go, we've got the roof going on. So these are, are two separate little chook houses and they will be separated down the middle by a fence. And the lane boxes will be at the back and then the door to each of them will be out here so and underneath will be where their food and their little drink cups will be and that's where they can dust bath as well so it's coming along beautifully so clever so lucky all right so i'm pretty excited to plant some potatoes now i've got this garden bed ready got the potatoes out that you saw I'm just gonna pull the hay back and dig the potatoes in a little bit I'm gonna do a bit of a my take on the Ruth Stout method Ruth Stout I think it is where she plants in hay or straw but doesn't actually put it in you know the potato in the ground a lot of people don't like digging potatoes out but I actually like digging out potatoes so I'm gonna put them in the ground a little bit and then cover them in the hay we are going to have a frost in a couple of days, a couple of frost, and it's going to be a bit chilly, but it should take a couple of weeks for the, the green shoots to come up, and then I'll have to use my, my frost covers, and, and we'll just see how we go, because as you can see, they are ready to go in, like some form of alien. I, I hope this works, but I have got some seed potatoes here that are not quite so alien form, and I'm planting them around about 30 centimetres apart. Um, I don't mind smaller potatoes. I find them a little bit more useful than um, the bigger ones. So uh, I'm gonna get to it and plant as many of these as I can today. So finish this row and then I'll keep digging this row. Um, but I'm so excited to get uh, my first 
crop in into my new big bed again. So I'll uh, get planting. So second garden bed done. This one I covered in straw because we'll plant potatoes in this garden bed here in another four weeks perhaps. So we'll end up with two rows of potatoes and hopefully that will be enough. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, when we're talking today, we probably won't tear a slot we thought. We may not have enough dirt to do that. So we might just keep going as, as we're going, but like lots of things, it changes. Oh, that's Millie in the background. I'm supposed to be assisting, collecting and chopping wood. So I better go and do that. All right, until next time, that's the veggie garden. Thanks for watching.